What an interesting question. I believe I have something of an answer. What's up guys, that's Lockbot Sawyer, and here we want to do a breakdown slash live reaction and analysis of Nier's Can Yuji and Toto Defeat Suka? The truth. This is gonna be interesting. I haven't reacted to a mere video. Let me like the video right now. I, oh shoot, that's not liking the video. That's clicking on the show. Let me like the video right now. But with that being the case, I haven't reacted to a mere video in a little bit. And he makes straight gas. That's why I've been backpacking and like Loki saving a bunch of his videos so I can react to them in bulk. But with that being the case, we have a lot to talk about. And what a shame that we have so, so little time. So let's not waste any more time and let's hop right into it. Editing me, are you ready? Please show yourself. Three, two, one, go. You know, what's up, guys? That guy with a. Why is my voice. What's up, guys? That guy. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. What's up, guys? That guy with a pencil here. Fun fact I do happen to have it on me and keep it on me at all times. And another fun fact did you know that Mir is a fantastic content creator? And if you somehow found me before you found him, you should go find him. The link to his channel will be in the description down below, along with the link to the original video. Please go watch it, because I'm going to yap quite extensively. I'm not... <clears throat> One moment. I'm not under the restriction of a binding vow right now. My yapping is unlimited. So please, if you want to check out the original video without my yapping, the link will be in the description down below, along with the link to your Mir's channel. Please go check him out, once again. I'm assuming you probably find him before you find me, but just in case you haven't, fantastic content creator. Covers mostly JJK, but he does have some other bits of content on the channel. Please, go peep. But with that being the case, let me simply answer the question. Can Yuji and Toto defeat Tsukuna? They can. Will they? Hmm. Here's the thing, here's the thing. I would love to say that we are in the final stretch. That we have seen everything from Tsukuna at this point, And we're really going full deep into it. We're like, we're really just running back Shibuya real quick. Where it's going to be Yuji and Toto versus Major Antagonist. Major Antagonist Tsukuna. Tsukuna, super duper weak, super duper fatigued, super duper defeated, bada bing, bada boom. Throw hands. But, ultimately... Unless a certain other fight wraps up beforehand, I don't think this is going to be the end. I don't think they're going to succeed in defeating him for a couple reasons. Number one, like I said, Hikari vs. Urume is still going on. And unless you're like me and holding out some sort of sick, twisted hope that Big Jaku is just waiting around the corner one way or another trying to... So, like, literally, if you think this is like a run-back, run-back, run-back of Shibuya... And, like, Sukuna is going to get beaten down. He's going to start running away. And then Kenjaku is going to appear out of nowhere and be like, Should I save you, Ryoman Sukuna? Which is, I think, literally impossible because he doesn't have a body right now. But still, I was using something like that's going to happen. Sukuna is our final antagonist. Urume is not long, lasting longer than Sukuna. Last we saw Urume, which was literally chapter 259, they were untouched. Their clothes were a bit ruffled. And they were fine. So they're getting wrapped up first, which implies that either Toto and Yuji versus Sukuna is going to go on forever and or it's just not the final battle. Number two, Sukuna knows Boogie Woogie inside and out because he was literally inside and out of Yuji. Unlike almost every other opponent who's dealt with Boogie Woogie Toto, which is usually on their first attempt, whether you're looking at Hanami, whether you're looking at Mahito, whether you're looking at anybody Toto really fights, Sukuna not only understands what it feels like, but he actively knows how to deal with it because he was freshly synced with Yuji the entire time. He has the full data download on Boogie Woogie. Right now, he's technicalist, and he should only have the two arms. But this is still Ryoman Sukuna. And Yuji is still Yuji Itadori, and Toto is still Toto Aoi. And while I'm perfectly fine with both of these characters being much stronger, obviously Yuji for the seven black flashes, and Toto simply because of the time skip, I still don't think they're, like, easily going to win, if they win at all, due to the nature of Sukuna's understanding of their main technique flow. Number three. 
Binding vows. Sukuna has been using them like crazy, and I can't knock his hustle. And I think this is another case where a binding vow could occur. Currently, by the end of 259, he is technicless. His technique is in a state of burnout. But at the same time, I don't trust it. I really don't. I think at best they get a chapter of him being technicless before he restores it. Or gets restored automatically. We don't actually know Sukuna's refresh time. Now with it being confirmed that Sukuna essentially uses the fire arrow inside of his domain. That's how he did it against Big Raga initially. At least that's what it seems to confirm. Yeah. We don't know whether or not that was a cooldown thing or a artificial cooldown thing or there was no cooldown at all and the cooldown happened after he launched that fire arrow but i'm assuming one way or another sukun is going to get his technique back all that i don't think we're just going to win against the technical sukuna for all those reasons i don't think they're going to defeat sukuna they could they can because once again defeating sukuna doesn't actually mean like executing him if that were the case maki would have lopped its head off if that were the case yuda wouldn't have turned off jacob's ladder if that were the case gojo I don't know. Probably not. No, probably not Gojo. I mean, maybe he punches Sukuna in the head and not in the chest. Bada bing, bada boom. Maybe hits him with a black flash in the forehead and not in like the chest. But whatever. Outside of that, Maki's had multiple chances to behead him. Not what they're looking for. Maki didn't even need to show up in Yuta's domain. He could have just deep fried Sukuna forever and just waited for Sukuna to fall on some lich type beat. But they were not looking for that. So ultimately. Defeating Sukuna is saving Megami. Will Yuji have enough time to dive into Sukuna's soul world and drag Megami from the depths? Even with Todo Aoi being there, I don't think so. Something else needs to happen, one way or another. And also the merger. Let's not forget about the merger, but the merger is separate from Sukuna, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that. I've been yapping for way too long. Let's actually hop into the video itself. On leak night for chapter 259, I was actually asleep, so I wasn't able to see the chapter as it was coming out. But when I woke up, I saw that a lot of people were hating on the chapter before I even got a chance to read it. So going into reading this chapter, I expected a boring and repetitive type of chapter. But when I got around to reading chapter 259 for myself, I can't believe that I saw that some people were calling this chapter bad. I don't know if it was some things in this chapter that weren't fully explained or didn't make sense to some people, but I think that chapter 259 is one of the best chapters that have come out recently, and I honestly believe that it holds the most potential and excitement for future chapters because we now have Toto back and he and Yuji are once fighting again. These. I mean, I agree. Notably, I did see, and I, I heck, I was even on a live or two where I like participated. Notably, I don't necessarily get the the only thing. The only thing I'll give some people, Choso, to a certain degree, it's a it's a very fifty fifty thing. It depends on how you interpret the chapter. To Choso's end does feel sort of afterthoughtish. One, once again, due to the lack of buildup of Eugene Shows' relationship, they get very few interactions to build up their brotherly bond that's so important. But also because Todo Aoi comes back and ends up flipping the entire script of the chapter. You can peep it in my live reaction over on Patreon for as low as $1 a month, or you can remember for as low as $3 a month. You can literally see my mood flip. Like, I'm like, I, I, I was feeling something throughout the show so part. And then Todo Aoi walked through the smoke and my brain went, okay. No more sad time. We happy. And while that's fine, Choso is a relatively important character. If we were doing like a narrative weight tier list, I'd, I'd say he's like a high high B tier, low A tier in terms of like narrative importance. He falls behind like all the main characters and stuff like that. But still, Choso's really, really important. So the fact that he didn't get a full chapter dedicated to his end is a little bit whack. And Toto's return does raise questions. It'll raise questions that I'm going to talk about in another video, but it does raise questions on why he didn't interfere earlier, why wait till this. It brings in like so, it brings in some things that could cause issues. I can see that, but on a surface level reading, the chapter's gas, and even on a deeper level reading, I still appreciate the chapter. Once again, the whole idea of the trade off of a brother for a brother. The brother that you were born into versus the brother that you found. The connections and confirmations of this chapter from the confirmations of Fuga and how that works and the idea of the furnace and of itself all the way to Toto's new expansion of his ability and the new throbbing, pulsing, undulating beat of Boogie Woogie. All of that being confirmed and the plans and the layers and confirming that Yuji is actually Loki a snitch even if entirely unintentionally. Like, there's so much that this chapter does 
on a character level for Choso and Yuji and their dynamic, on a actual plot progression level in the collapse of Sugina's domain and the burning out of his technique, on a character return level in terms of total returning back to the narrative after literally not being name dropped for, I make a big point out of this every single time I mention it, and I know people are sick and tired of me doing it, but the man has not had a name drop for over a hundred chapters. And I'm talking JJK a hundred chapters. Yo, we hadn't heard from Total in like three years. <laughs> Maybe four. Like it's legit. It's been a minute, 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 minute since Total even got a name mentioned. Not to talk about actually appearing in the manga. So his return is massive. The confirmation that Boogie Woogie is still alive and breathing is massive. The final jumping between Total, Aoi, and Yuji Tadori is massive. Like I'm not sure. I think a lot of the negativity comes from Choso fans feel like he didn't get enough. And I can understand that. I can respect that. I can leave with it. I can ride with it. But personally, I kind of get... Once again, he's a high B tier, low A tier character in terms of importance. He's a transition, and I like the idea that the brothers feed into each other rather than being entirely separate. You could have ended this chapter on Toto and then opened up the next chapter with all the explanations and stuff like that. You could have. But I think, especially considering a lot of people have been complaining about the stagnancy of JJK as of recent, considering the fact that, you know, we are in final arc territory, we are in big bad final battle with big bad final villain, we are in the Aizen arc, in the Madara arc, we're in the late stage fake Karakuta towns, your fourth great ninja wars where we are fighting the same guy. A lot of people have been complaining about the stagnancy and the lack of progress and lack of everything. So I think ultimately, often a big man like Choso and bringing back a big man like Toto is a smart move that moves the plot forward quite a bit. Like, I don't know. I don't get the hate behind this chapter either. I like it. But once again, you know, I'm biased. Heavily biased. Because, you know, I love me some Toto Aoi. But let's see. Two are always fighting some sort of duo tag team match, and it's always the best fights in the series. Yuji and Toto versus Mahito. Yuji and Toto. That is, like, here's the thing. Don't get me wrong. I love Hakari versus Kashimo as the next guy. I love Gojo and Sukuna just as much as the next guy. And, like, the, the well, not Gojo and Sukuna. Gojo versus Sukuna as much as the next guy. And, in fact, the longer and longer I think about that fight, and whenever I do my little mini rereads or just do a full reread of it, I get further and further appreciation of it. And the more we get confirmed later on, and looking back on that fight with new perspective always helps. I, that fight likely will age and rise in the rankings further and to be fair it doesn't have too much higher to rise it'll rise in the rankings as the longer the series progresses the more and more i think about it in regards to both of the two characters and their interactions in that fight but my favorite fight in the series spoilers for whatever fight ranking video i'm definitely going to do soon enough it is yuji and toto versus mahito it has everything from the interesting choreography to interesting power interactions to character culminations, to character interact, it just has everything. It has things that Hakari versus Kashimo lacks. It has things that Gojo versus Sukuna lacks. It has things that literally almost every other fight in the series lacks in some way, shape, or form. And a big part of that fight being so gas is total Aoi. So yeah, I agree. Once again, we're we're in we're in prime time right now. Will they win though? I don't know. Once again. I'm smelling something of a Shibuya. Maybe not a Kenny return. I would love it. I would love it if we got a full callback to Shibuya and Tsuki just crawling away and Big Jock were to come smack his thick throbbing brain meat all over Tsukuna's forehead and he just has to gobble it down. But likelihood of that happening? No. It's just, it's, it's likely straight copium for me. But, hey. I'm going to keep coping until the sun rises again. Let's Toto versus Hanami. And now, Yuji and Toto versus Sukuna. I mean, it only gets better with these two. There are other things other than Toto that happen. That is a funny thing, though. This is like a consistent uptrend with Toto and Yuji's fights. Like, I love Toto and Yuji versus Hanami, but it's not to the scale of Mahito. Or at least the Mahito battle. And you want to talk about character investment, character conflict, character creation, character culmination, character interaction, crazy choreography. Like, depending on how much time this fight gets, it, it can it can definitely rise up there to be to be in the contention. You know what I'm talking about? Like, for reference, 
One of my other favorite fights in the series is Yuta running the Sendai Gauntlet. Or the Sendai Free For All, whatever you want to call it. And admittedly, that comes from the sheer epic factor of it. And I like the choreography in that fight a lot. And I really like Curl for some reason. But with that being the case, this one, just overall, this has that emotional depth, that emotional weight that Sendai lacks. So depending on how this gets choreographed, bro, depending on what kind of crazy stuff goes down and how long it lasts, Sendai may be knocked off a pedestal. But the chapter that we're going to talk about, but... For the start, I want to focus on Toto being back and how I think Toto and Yuji will be able to compete against Sukuna. So we will get to Choso making a sacrifice, so that'll be later in the video. For right now, let's talk about Toto even returning and still being able to use Boogie Woogie. The main question is, well, how can Toto even still use Boogie Woogie? Well, we know that although he did lose his hand, he didn't lose his curse technique. We know that back against Mahito, he said that Boogie Woogie died, but it's not possible for your technique to just pass away. You know, as long as the technique is engraved in your body, which Toto's is, you will always have it within you. You just need to find a way to use it. So all this means is that Toto somehow some way while having his hand in a wrap has found a way to still resonate with Boogie Woogie. He says that he can feel the pulse of Boogie Woogie thriving inside of him. We always knew that you didn't only have to clap both of your hands to use Boogie Woogie. We saw that Toto was able to clap Mahito's hands and swap with him back in Shibuya. And I will say this, this is only in the anime. There is a very questionable scene where both of Toto's hands are grasped against Mahito's and somehow, some way, Toto claps. You know, I, I don't know how he clapped. There are some theories of him clapping. I don't know how he did it, but so we know that. You know, Toto is thicker than a snicker, my G. He claps some sort of cheeks, you know what I'm talking about? A man I've been talking to, so whatever that idol that he really likes is, but he claps something. He claps some cheeks real quick. But yeah, that's the thing, right? The reason that I was so with like, oh, well, Toto's cooked is because I thought his other hand was also messed up by the transfiguration, and thus he couldn't clap at all. But realistically... Him and Miwa could have gone crazy. <laughs> like, if he just needs someone else to clap with, he could have just done that. But, no, apparently Toto can use Boogie Woogie exclusively by himself again, which is intriguing, to say the very least. I'm fine with it. That's the thing. I would, I would, need, I need to think. Once again, one of my biggest things I'm thinking about for that video is, like, what could, what things could have been done? If Toto's introduced earlier, is there any or is there any particular hit, any particular blow that could have been landed, anything that could have been avoided if Toto Aoi had spawned in the battlefield sooner? The main thing I'm thinking is Higuruma, but I, that's like the one thing that comes to mind because like Boogie Woogie interacts weirdly with Maki, and notably Maki was ironically enough always meant to be a stalling metric. Like, don't get me wrong, I love Maki. She was never meant to lethally harm Suguna. Like, I, I know she took out his heart, but, like, they knew he would survive that. She even says that, like, yeah, you know, I heard about this. You did it. Impressive. But, like, with that being the case, Maki was never necessarily going to be a key to taking him out, like a Higuruma, like a Yuji. So, Toto's facilitation arguably should have waited to this last moment. Like, I'm trying to, other than Higuruma, like, you could maybe argue he could have, like, swapped Higuruma and Tsukuna's positions in one way, shape, or form during their encounter. And then that would allow Higuruma to, like, just pierce him. Just straight up impale Sukuna and then hypothetically end the battle way earlier with way more characters unharmed. But that's about it. I think Toto being held back this long in spite of Boogie Woogie is fine. Because what are you going to do? Are you going to throw him into the colonies? What colony? The Higuruma colony? I'm like, why would you do that? The Megami fight? Why would you do that? The Yuna fight? Why would you do that? Maki? Like, what? like there's, no, there's no real place to throw him. And once again, for the sake and sanctity of tricking Sukuna, which is what 259 highlights a lot, like the whole idea that they didn't tell Yuji anything, just because Sukuna, bring, 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 yeah, obviously that does make sense. So I'm, I'm kind of leaning with Iraq. Toto, somehow, some way, can clap without using just his hands. And that's if you take the anime as canon. In the manga, he always uses his hands. Now, one thing we know is that Toto has been fine-tuning this technique Boogie Woogie alongside Yuta Akotsu, implying that they had some sort of training together and Yuta maybe showed him how to manipulate his curse energy better without the use of a hand. 
who knows but we do know that he was able to train with yuda and now he is able to use boogie woogie with one hand missing and i'm just gonna go ahead and say this oh before you get to that i'll admit i'm still interested to see what the new hand looks like because remember the weird thing about that hand it's literally like because of what mahito did with it with El transfiguration it's exploded the, the shape of, like the shape of his soul is literally like it's not like his hand just was vaporized or blown no like it is consistently set on explodo mode so like say you were to heal toto his hand would just explode again because that's what the shape of his soul is like there so i'm wondering what kind of special thing he did because it's not like he's i mentioned this in the review it's not like his hand is wrapped up in stump it's very specifically wrapped up like like kind of in this shape like if, like if it was made like a mitt and he's kind of like he has a baseball glove instead of just you know a stump so i'm very interested to see what his hand looks like if he even still has a regular hand but we'll see all right now in this fight against sukuna we know that yuji has the level of speed that's needed to keep on par with the current sukuna that we have but toto has to have gotten faster from the last i need to figure out how to do that that little subscribe and click the notification bell thing i don't want to just ask y'all are you subscribed though i really appreciate it have you liked the video if you're still here i'd greatly appreciate it it helps trust me please i, I need like all the help like, the algorithm does not like me I, I don't know what i did to it <laughs> i don't know what i did to it. I, I must have like i don't know kicked it in the chin or something accidentally because like the algorithm does every, every bit of support helps please I'm, I'm Last time we saw him, if he even wants a chance to keep up in this fight against Sukuna. Because we know that Yuji has gotten significantly stronger since Shibuya, but we have not seen Toto since that time period, so he has to have undergone some sort of training in order to make himself faster. And I do think that Gege will have Toto be able to keep up to some degree, because every time Yuji and Toto fight together, they are fighting at around the same level. So I think that Gege is just going to insert some sort of physical training on top of this technique training so that Toto will be able to keep up and I don't want to say be equal to Sukuna in terms of physical stats, but at least be somewhat relative to where he is able to keep himself in the fight. And as I just said, for Yuji, he already has shown that he has the physicals to keep up with this current Sukuna. But we do know this, every time we've seen Yuji fight against Toto, he just performs it better than we've ever seen him perform in the past. For example, remember that fight against Hanami? That is when Yuji was able to grow and bloom into the beginning of a sorcerer. Toto was the reason for this. And in the fight against Mahito, we see that Toto was the reason that Yuji was even able to get up and fight against Mahito in the first place. And then, because of a fake out that Toto used at the end of the fight, Yuji was able to land a black flash on Mahito. And he even, in the moment of being in the zone before the black flash, thanked Toto, and this is why they were able to win the fight. So we do have this common occurrence, whenever Yuji and Toto fight together, Yuji performs better than usual. So I think that not only will we have the Yuji that we've been seeing against Sukuna, but a better form of Yuji because he is now fighting alongside his big bro. One of the main problems that Toto and Yuji are going to come across is that Sukuna already knows the ins and outs. Yeah, but okay, so yeah, we're going on that path. Um, yeah, that's the thing. Toto keeping up with... <laughs> You know, it's the thing with Sukuna, right? You kind of, you need to just acquiesce. I know a lot of people have issues with it, but you kind of see to acquiesce. People are going to keep up with Sukuna. Why? Because Sukuna lets them. It's clear. Maybe not this Sukuna who's like super giga omega nerfed. But it's clear that a heartless, arm missing, toes tingling Sukuna was able to perception blitz Maki. Maki. Now, I know, there are going to be people who are going to be like, well, Maki's slow. Maki's not as fast as you. Ma she still has the best perception and literal precognition of our entire anti Sukuna crew. He perception blitzed her badly horrifically <laughs> so it's clear that if he wanted to he could and would he just doesn't so total keeping up perfectly fine 
the resonance that's going to exist between him and Yuji is going to be interesting to tackle because Yuji should be an entirely different dimension. Like, like let's be real, Seven Black Flash is Yuji. It it shouldn't be comparable. Like, there's no reason. But I'm assuming Yuji's going to actually like turn into Sukuna for a little bit and like hold back in order to make sure that Toto is able to like keep up and like sync properly. Because like, I'll be real. If Toto is at all relative to Seven Black Flashes, CT amped <laughs> Yuji, I'm I may I may flip a lid, but I mean I'd be down with it. I'd be down with it. It's just a Toto upscale. I'm more than happy to upscale Toto. That's that's the 50-50 of it, right? It's like we see Yuji's development and growth and understand how far and how deep his depths go from the multiple black flashes to awakening a curse technique to awakening another curse technique to the soul about like we've seen a lot of Yuji's development. For Toto to come back and be at all relative to this UG because off-screen training? Even with Yuda Kotsu, I'd be able to, I'd, I'd, like, something would stink. It, I wouldn't knock it. I, you wouldn't hear me complain about it too in-depth, but something would stink. Of the Boogie Woogie it. technique, because he was inside of Yuji's body and witnessed every time that Yuji and Toto fought together. And he also felt it. You gotta remember, Yuji and Tsukuna, like, they, like, share physical experiences. That's why Yuji was able to learn RCT so quickly and obviously develop Tsukuna's technique. Like, they were, they were literally the same person. Like, just with separate consciousnesses and separate souls, somewhat. Even, even separate souls is putting, is being real generous. Tsukuna has felt Boogie Woogie. He's experienced it. He has all the physical memories and data of how Yuji would combo out of Boogie Woogie. So, like... He's got, he's got a data dump of data dumps, it's crazy. So he already knows what to expect, and if anything, we do know that you can sense sorcerers by their curse energy feel, so as long as Sukuna can sense where both of them are at the same time, even if they swap, it's not like Sukuna will lose track of them. For example, you know how one of Toto and Yuji's best things that they do is one of them comes from either the left or the right, and the other one comes from the opposite side, and then out of nowhere they swap at the last second, maybe it'll be Yuji then lands a black flash at the last moment where Toto just swaps somewhere else but the thing with Sukuna is if he can keep track of both of them it won't matter if they swap as long as Sukuna kills either one of them his job becomes extremely easier because if he kills Toto he no longer has to worry about the boogie woogie technique and if he kills Yuji then he no longer has to worry about the guy who can keep repeatedly hitting his soul over and over. If anything we'll probably see Sukuna go for Toto first because Toto is more of an annoyance than a damage character if that makes sense. You don't really see Toto doing damage amongst the high tiers anymore but we do know that he is annoying against these higher tier fighters because he can just keep swapping people around. Now, one strategy that I do see. I do agree with the whole idea that Yuji and Toto swapping places likely will not be anywhere near as effective. Once again, Sukuna just has really, really good battle sense. Infinitely better battle sense than even Mahito did, and Mahito was already a genius battle tactician. But I think an effective way to mix it up is swapping Sukuna's plays. Like just in, like just messing with them. Just getting super duper annoying with them. And like especially if Toto gets extra creative with it. And like really starts to use the depths of Boogie. Let's say he grabs a piece of the ground. Crushes it. Just a bunch of different pebbles. Imbues them all with cursed energy. And just throws them up. Just tosses them into the air. Those are a bunch of things that could be swapped with. That could be comboed into anything. And it seems to some degree Toto can choose the spatial positioning of his opponents after he swaps them. Like, he can choose how they're angled or laid based on how they switch. So if Toto gets creative creative, he could get annoying by switching Sukuna around. I do agree that Yuji and Toto swapping places is pretty much negligible. And in fact, could set one of them up to get lethal damage. Obviously, at this point, Sukuna cannot one-shot Yuji. Like I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be for real, for real, real. Unless some sort of binding vow comes in, or some world cutting slap, unless something transcendent happens, Yuji after eating a full output level and shrine, nothing Sukuna has in his kit right now is one shot of Yuji, nothing, nothing, nothing at all, legit, not that man's, he's tweaking off seven black flashes too. Yuji's basically unkillable. Sukuna has to go for Toto. That's the thing. 
Honestly, I, I hate to say it, it would straight up be better if Toto just stood back, threw rocks in the air, and just kept... <laughs> like, he should not even get close to Sukuna. I'll be completely for real, for real. Because Yuji's basically unkillable. At least by this current Sukuna. At least in my opinion. I don't know. Like, once again, unless Binding Vows come into play, Yuji's unstoppable. He is literally the anti-Sukuna weapon right now. We'll take no damage from any of his attacks. So we'll keep weakening Sukuna and can heal off anything so far. Because his cursed energy amounts, his RCT total, under that, none of that's come into play yet. So, yeah, Yuji's chilling. Toto is the liability here. He's the one that Sukuna is definitely going to go for because he's the only one Sukuna could likely do damage to. And all it takes is... Being useful really against hand. Sukuna is that we know that he can actually swap people with Mei Mei's crows. So I, I, I don't know if they'll do this, but there is a chance that we will see Toto swap Sukuna up into the sky with one of Mei Mei's crows. I, I don't know if Toto will end up doing this, but it would be a way to just disorient Sukuna because like Mahito said in Shibuya, and once again, he, he could use the crows, but he also could just use rocks. And here and here's here's an even crazier thing, right? We don't know the status of Yuda or Maki or any of them being completely for any of the heavy hitters. We know Hokari's still fighting Arume. I highly doubt we're gonna get a swap into Hokari. But at any point, if Toto's feeling real devious and like Maki still by Miwa or something like that, where he just senses soul split and then that brings everything that soul split's connected to, which would be Maki. Maki could come out of nowhere. And here's the thing for Maki in particular, obviously Yuda would be the more primary switch, right? Like you bring back a stitch back together, Yuda, and when Sugana's expecting just like punch Toto right in the face, he gets met with like a manifested, fully manifested Rika that just like just clocks him straight across the jaw from the swamp of Toto. But at the same time, don't sleep. Maki could just reappear. Suna is going to be focused on fighting Toto and Yuji. She didn't go for the leg last time, but she could go again. She could go again. He's still got two arms, don't he? He can lose those. Why not? So, like, Toto opens the door just by being a warm body there by fighting Sukuna. He can just... He can st he can either introduce people back into the battle that have been removed from it, like a Yuda Akotsu, obviously basically no one else, but like a Yuda Akotsu, and or he could facilitate as a just general distraction for anyone else to come slide in. We'll Even when you know about Toto's curse technique, it is disorienting. I do not think that it would be good if Toto just kept swapping the three of them, Toto, Yuji, and Sukuna with each other. I think the best way for them to get an advantage is if they are swapping the three of them with other objects nearby. And I do want to revisit something I just said. I did just say that Toto isn't known for being able to hit as hard as the high tiers we've seen throughout Jujutsu Kaisen. But to be fair to Toto, a long time has passed. We don't know how much physical training he's been doing, so it is possible that he hits just as hard as Yuji now, if not harder. But I don't think that will be the case because that would be garbage. I would not like that. I would, I would despise that. I'll be completely. I would. I would hate that. But here's another thing, though. A big difference that is between the Mahito, Toto, and Yuji fight that is going to be separate from the Sukuna, Toto, and Yuji fight. Now, even if it's 0.1% of damage, it's still damage. Before, Toto was basically ineffective against Mahito. The Black Flash Toto landed was nice. It allowed him to catch up and sync up better with Yuji because it gave him a little bit of an awakening, but it basically did nothing. Because he couldn't damage the soul. But Sukuna isn't soul immune or soul resistant. Every bit of damage that Toto does is still damage. All it is is just chipping down that health bar. Bit by bit, piece by piece, he can actually help with that. Unlike his previous major battle, which is still good. And once again, I smell black flashes in the air. Something tells me it's gonna get devious. I could smell maybe a little sequence. A black flash fever, if you will, where a certain total owie starts tweaking out. And once again, 
I'm still telling you, y'all sleeping on the idea of just like straight grabbing the ground. There's rubble everywhere. Grabbing the ground and doing a bunch of rocks with cursed energy and just, especially with how high he could throw him with his amped cursed energy strength. The mix-ups could go crazy, but let's see. Ryuji is just known as being one of the hardest physical hitters recently, especially because he now has this soul resonance attached to his punches. So Yuji probably is the hardest physical puncher right now. And the important thing here is to know. Even as a Maki meat muncher, I agree. Like, I know you're going to be like, Pencil, do you agree with that? Is it Maki this strong? No. I love Maki. She's very physically powerful. She is able to knock around Sukuna a little bit, but still. Her AP without souls. We don't kinda, need but, Toto to see. do punches that just crumble Sukuna or just make Sukuna cry out in agony. The only thing we need from Toto when it comes to physical attributes is one, the speed to keep up within the fight, and two, just enough power behind the punches to damage Sukuna a little bit, just enough to make the punches hurt. I'm not expecting Toto to be strong enough to actually damage Sukuna to an extreme degree or anything, but as long as he can make Sukuna be in some sort of pain, then he and Yuji will undoubtedly get a leg up on Sukuna because Sukuna will have to worry about both of them damaging him. And there's one more thing I haven't mentioned yet, and I haven't seen this be Sukuna be in some sort of pain, then he and Yuji will undoubtedly get a leg up on Sukuna because Sukuna will have to worry about both of them. See that? See that right there? That's the tech. That's the tech. But instead of just two stones, make 50. Just, just, just pick up rocks. Just pick up a whole bunch of rocks. And infuse them with cursing and just, just wild out. You can have Yuji do it too. Like, it doesn't just have to be Toto. Like, Yuji could, like, scrape up a bunch of the ground using his claw hands that still haven't been explained. I saw, unless I'm insane, those claw hands and those weird arms, they still haven't been explained. He could use the claw hands, just dig up, imbue everything with curse energy, throw it up into the air, charge it, Tsukuna, and then just start. I'm damaging but, him. That's... And there's one more thing I haven't mentioned yet, and I haven't seen this be brought up on social media, but to be fair, I'm not on anime social media that much. But I do not see people talking about the fact that Toto could potentially swap out another sorcerer at the last moment to deal a deadly strike to Sukuna. We I mean, technically, I did it in this video, though. I haven't mentioned that yet, but technically. We see in this recent chapter that it is possible for Toto to swap out with Maki. We see it in this picture here. So it is possible that as Toto is coming towards Sukuna, whether it be from behind or the front or the side, he can swap out with Maki at the last second and have her stab Sukuna with her soul sword, which although it doesn't kill Sukuna, we see it does some sort of damage as it actually in the past has stopped Sukuna from using RCT to heal himself and the soul damage does much more than physical strikes. But for the most part, I think that this fight will be restricted to mainly Yuji, Toto, and Sukuna. I don't see other sorcerers hopping into this fight because this is the big return for Toto. And Toto and Yuji have fought together in the past. It's one of the most iconic things in Jujutsu Kaisen, Yuji and Toto's fight. So I think that Gege will have- That's a three-peat. I'm, I'm gonna use that as a trick. Please subscribe. <laughs> Please like the video. But he's I agree. I do agree. Like this does seem like a Yuji and Toto's fight specifically. But you know how much crazier it would be, how much more fun it would be if like Maki showed up. If we kind of got like a fusion run back, because let's be real. In 215, the jumping of a century, Yuji and Maki, the two physical beasts, that got cut off. That got interrupted by Uraume. We didn't get to see those hands get run fully. And Maki could go crazy, especially considering, right, Maki doesn't have to be the only one to wield Soul Split. Yuji can too. He can perceive the contours of the soul. He could pick it up. So imagine Maki, like, throws up Soul Split, charges Sukuna to, like, do a full-blown body tackle him, like she did back in the building. And then Sukuna's like... Okay, I don't know why you would do this. Now I don't have to worry about you. He goes to like cleave her, and then she just leaps off. And then when Suka is not expecting it, Yuji just comes out and takes something off. Takes one of the twin dragons off. You know what I'm talking about? He just 
instant, like super. Let me stop. But there's the possibility. Obviously, Total can't wield Soul Split, but Yuji can. The combos could be crazy. It could get wild. Obviously, Yuta too. Like Yuta, Yuta could go absolutely crazy as well. But once again, I'm I'm mainly thinking of Maki because I really want. We we sort of got the Yuji and Yuta jumping. I still ain't really get my fix on the Maki. And Have Yuji this be jumping. reserved for Yuji Buzzing. in total only until either one of them falls or is about to fall. And I do want to talk about the other things that we saw in the chapter. We do know that Whoa. Choso sacrificed himself. And that is honestly one of the saddest things I've seen in Jujutsu Kaisen recently because you do have to understand that in the grand scheme of things, Choso has only known Yuji for a few months. But in that few months of time, Choso grew so close to Yuji that he was willing to sacrifice himself in order to keep Yuji alive. And I do know that some people on social media were saying that it is bad writing that this blood ball was able to save Yuji's life. But the thing is, Choso put everything he had, you know, all of his life energy, everything he had into this blood capsule. So I'm not surprised that it was able to save Yuji from the furnace. As it is possible that the reason this ball was so strong was the result of a binding vow that Choso made on his deathbed, or it is just possible that since Choso put everything he had, all of his life energy and curse energy into this ball, that was the reason that Yuji was able to survive in it. Either way, we know that Choso made a magnificent sacrifice, and I do think this was a good ending for Choso, as it seemed like his usefulness in the plot has been achieved so i don't think that we need choso for the future of the manga and i don't think that anybody although it is sad that choso was gone is going to miss him too much going forward one other thing that yeah that's the unfortunate thing about choso like here's the thing i talked about this in the review a lot but the only thing that i think is missed with choso is the idea of living as a human but even then as was pointed out eloquently in my comment section, he technically did. His bonds with Yuji, helping the sorcerers, that was his living as a human. That was his atonement for all he harmed back in Shibuya, for the sacrifice of his brothers. Ultimately, Choso was a tale that was almost destined to end in death. So it only makes sense that it does. It took a while. He escaped it. He danced around it for a while. That boy was dodging, dipping, bobbing, and weaving for a hot minute but destiny arrives all the same or should i say i have it's unfortunate but yeah that's the thing toto i love him i probably still like him more than choso but choso yeah he he was destined to die what's cool and from this chapter is that we know that the conditions for using this furnace which is just the flame arrow, is now the use of using cleave and dismantle, sort of like preparing food. You cut up the food first and then you cook it with fire. That is what we now see with Sukuna. We know that it has changed over time because Sukuna had to make binding vows, especially because of the things that happened during the fight with Gojo. But the end result is what we have now. Sukuna has to use cleave and dismantle first, basically preparing the food, then he is able to use furnace and burn everybody inside of his domain expansion. I love this concept a lot. I think that Gege executed this very well, having this whole idea of Sukuna being a chef and preparing the food before he puts it in the oven. And because of this, we don't even know if the others in the domain expansion actually survived, like Miwa and Maki for example, because this furnace does disintegrate everybody in there. We know that Toto had his job to save the others, but Toto wasn't direct when he said the condition of the others, he just said that they're most likely okay. So if Toto was successful and completely swapped the ones inside of Sukuna's domain outside, then they're alive. But if he messed up, then yeah, they got cooked. But the only way for us to see whether or not they survived and whether or not Yuji and Toto will prevail against Sukuna is to wait and see what Gege decides to do next. I want to thank you so much for reaching the end of this video and if you enjoyed then I would really appreciate it if you leave a like and subscribe to the channel as I do post on different topics that you guys give Four me times. and topics that I come up with on my own. Thank you so much for watching. Alright, that's the end of the video. I'll let the last few seconds play out. I just don't want anything crazy to play at the end. But... WB. I didn't realize. I thought it was going to be like just a breakdown. I mean, it still mostly was Toto and... UG breakdown versus Suka, but 
This is basically a chapter review. Nice, nice, nice work, nice work, nice work. W video, W video, W video. Yeah, he brought up points. He, you can tell he lent to the same conclusion that I did about the switching. He didn't go fully in depth on the idea of like what total could really bring to a battle with like switching everything, getting real chaotic. A total domain expansion is something I've seen da dancing around the community that could be fun. Like I don't know, there's a lot of chaos that's opened up by this, and overall, I'm excited to see it just as much as he is. But somehow, if you made it to the ways of the end of this chunker of a non-binding vow video, please do me a favor and leave. Make it jiggle. Is that too long? Make it jiggle. It's three words. Leave make it jiggle in the comment section down below. I'd like to thank you so much for watching. Please remember to leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you hit that little notification bell so you do not miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also I do happen to have a Patreon down below where you can support me for as well as one kind of one. No monthly things like exclusive videos, early content, and more. This will now become a member of the channel for as low as $3 a month to get the same perks and more. So those perks include the live reactions to the very next chapter of Jujutsu Kaisen, and free variations of all my videos, and if you become a $25 patron or a $25 member, you can order what Ever video you want. Also, 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 I do have a link to my ko fi in the description down below if you want to make a donation to your boy to help a brother out. $5 for a nice little short video, 25 beans for a regular length video. Just let me know with a link to the ko fi down below. But now, uh, thank you so much for watching once again, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is Dagger the Pencil, writing off. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, thank you to our $3 members, O'Connor Plays, Greyhound, Akids Void, Astro, Eternal Flame, Red Wolf, 4765, King Sukuna, NMA, Real Rare, Paris Arnold, and G Prosper. And that lady give a thank you to our five dollar members: Super Gamer Q, Steron, Sean, Sammy, Oexian, Midnight Lord Twenty One, Kevin and Carnacion, Josh Brown, and A Plus A. And I'd like to give a thank you to our $7 member, Autumn Mornings Lazo. And I'd like to give a thank you to our $10 members, Robbie Uchia and Jay Warrior. And I'd like to give a thank you to our $10 patrons, Joaquin Munoz, Joaquin Munoz, and Idemo Kami. And I'd like to give a final gigantuan thank you to our $25 patron, Calvin Alder.